While studying the previous unit that dealt with the flood traditions, you probably noticed that the differences between the biblical and extra-biblical stories are related to different perceptions of the concept of divinity. We have seen that the different traditions have different viewpoints on issues such as the exclusiveness of God, his sovereignty over the forces of nature, and his rational manner of taking decisions. These are important details, but they still do not supply us with a profound definition of the essence of biblical faith. Such a definition was proposed by the biblical scholar Yechezkel Kaufman. Kaufman, a brilliant and original thinker, devoted his life to describing Israelite religion during the biblical period, its nature and development. His approach to this issue is described at length in his seven-volume book, The History of the Israelite Faith. It is strongly recommended that you become familiar with Kaufman's book, considered a milestone of biblical theology. You will find bibliographic details on the course website. In order to introduce some of Kaufman's ideas, we will use quotes from his essay on Israelite religion in the Hebrew Encyclopedia Biblica. The quotes are translated from modern Hebrew. Kaufman believed that the difference between monotheism and polytheism is not quantitative. We are not dealing here with the question how many gods there are, one or many. Rather, Kaufman believed that Monotheism is a unique creation, fruit of a special revelation. It is a non-idolatrous perception of reality. It is a deep-rooted, fundamental contrast to idolatry. It is non-idolatry. In the previous lesson, we saw that the Mesopotamian gods do not rule with absolute control over nature. After bringing a terrible flood upon the world, they can no longer stop it, and they themselves become its victims. Kaufman was of the opinion that such perceptions stem from the fundamental principles of the idolatrous belief that the gods themselves are subject to the primeval power that is the law of nature. Divine life is also linked to a certain material development and is subject to a system of essential eternal laws. Divinity is not, according to the idolatrous perception, a prime source of existence, and the will of the deity is not the ultimate law of existence. There is a former, super-divine existence in which the deity is rooted and to the laws of which it is subject. Note that Kaufman preferred to refer to polytheism as idolatry. This choice of terminology will be discussed later. When we studied the creation and flood mythological stories, we saw that the Mesopotamian gods often have human weaknesses. They need to eat and drink and they may be involved in arguments or make impulsive decisions. According to Kaufman, these characteristics stem from a fundamental trait of ancient Near Eastern polytheism. Kaufman believes that in essence, idolatry is nothing but a deification of natural phenomena. Just as every living being has physical needs, so do the gods. As life on Earth, so too divine life is dependent on material and on the vital forces hidden within it. The gods too need food and drink on which their force of life depends. Just as the living world is dominated by variety and abundance, so too is the world of the gods. The natural existence abounds with characters and nuances. The abundance of authorities and forces in nature reflects the abundance of authorities and forces in the sphere of the divine entity. There is a God of the heavens, and there is a God of the land, and there is a God of earth, and a God of water, etc. 